Hey, what's up? This is Jeremy Camp, and Tony Nolan is my friend. I love him dearly, and I've watched many people come into Christ because of his message. Uh, I'll encourage you guys to check out Tony, what he's doing. He's truly a man of God that has inspired me. God bless you guys. Hey guys, this is Francesca Battistelli, and I just want to encourage you. Tony Nolan is a man of God, and his messages inspire me, and I know they'll inspire you. So listen to him, listen to the Lord, and keep shining for Jesus. Bye. Peace, everybody. Tony Dolan here. Man, shout out to all of you in this Juice Faith family, students. Man, may the Lord bless you, watch over you. Hey, I'm honored to be a part of this uh, this event. Check this out. Bible, Bible. This is Bible. Now watch this. Here we go. What? <laughs> Hey, listen, th that may have been, for a bunch of you, that may have been the most attention that you've paid to God's word in a long time. But I'm telling you, hey, listen, I am pumped that you're here with us at this event because now we're going to pay attention to God's word for a few moments together. Now, check it out. Uh, the, the idea uh, tonight is, uh, is wisdom. Uh, wisdom. Say that with me. Wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, what is it? Well, it's the ability to handle life skillfully. The ability to handle life skillfully. And it, we all need it, it and especially in this day of like coronavirus. Where, But we may be tempted to say, yeah, the president needs it. Our senators need it. Representatives need it. Our governors, teachers, people in the community. But listen, we need it too. We need it to be able to handle every situation in our life skillfully so that we enjoy life and we don't just endure life. So check this out. When it comes to wisdom, a story comes to my mind. Back in the day when uh, like you picture in your mind like the Hobbit, uh, the landscape is filled with all these castles and these castles have thick and penetrable walls, these uh, towering pinnacles reaching toward the heavens. Well, inside those magnificent castles are these banquet halls where they were part Yes, they would. Party in there. And they had these massive 80-foot tables filled with uh, just succulent meats and incredible fruits. And, man, they just enjoyed this food. And there were ladies there in these long, flowing, elegant gowns. And the bros would be there in their, you know, regal suits trying to impress those little ladies. Well, listen, man, uh, they would be entertained by these singers and musicians and also a, a court judge gesture. You know, those guys with the funny looking hats that run around and act crazy, make people laugh. Well, the story goes that the gesture went a little too far in his humor and he insulted his king and the king got furious. <laughs> That's right. Furious. He got so furious, man. He was tripping and he, he was so insulted that he declared that the gesture should die. And the party goers and his, his court just prayed upon the king and said, please don't, don't, don't kill him. It, it, he spent too many years with us. He's a good guy. And he's made us laugh all of these years. Please have mercy on this guy. Well, the king relented, but only enough to allow the gesture to choose which way he would die. When the gesture heard this, he begged the king that, that, that he might have uh, time to, to pray and ask God for wisdom. And the king granted him one night and one night only. And they threw him in a dungeon. And all night long in that dungeon, the, the jester cried out to God, give me wisdom. And at the midnight hour, God gave him what he needed. And the next day, the guards came and grabbed that court jester and brought him to the king and threw him at the feet of the king. And the king stood up and looked at the jester and he said, jester, in what way have you chosen to die? And the jester looked up at him and he said, oh, Dear great Lord, if it's all the same to you, I would like to die of old age. <laughs> Get you some of that. Isn't that smart? That's crazy smart. That's incredible, man. That is incredible. You know what that is? That is handling a very rough patch of life very, very skillfully. Well, listen, how can you and I get that kind of wisdom? Not just for dying. I mean, God gives us that, right? In Jesus, you get connected with God through Jesus. You don't have to perish. You can have everlasting life. But God gives us wisdom, not just for dying, but for everyday life. And how can we gain that kind of ability to handle life skillfully? I'm going to give you three steps. There are three steps to gaining 
godly wisdom. You ready? Write them down on a piece of paper or put them on your tablet or your phone. But here they are, three steps to gaining wisdom. Number one, we must yield our will to God. We must yield our will to God. Jesus set the great example, right? Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was to go to the cross, he cried out those, that famous line, not my will, but your will be done. And for us, we've been given uh, instructions on how we are to posture ourselves for that kind of yielding to God. Romans chapter 12, verses one and two says, I, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, that you, that you let your, your bodies be a living sacrifice to God, which is your true act of worship. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. First step, yield our will to God. Second step, what is the second step? Ask God for wisdom. Yeah, just ask God for wisdom. Man, the Bible lets us know, man, when we ask God for wisdom in James 1, 5, it says this. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, any of you lacks wisdom, I do often. Any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. So you got it? Two first steps. Number one, yield our will to God. Number two, ask God for wisdom. That's simple. But here's the third most critical step. When you ask God for wisdom, you must seek wisdom in God's word. Psalms 119.105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. What is that? Lamp to my feet, light to my path. Well, the Bible helps you take the right step on the right path. Now, let's circle back to that gesture. Remember him, Mr. Funny, not so funny guy? <laughs> well, listen, that night when he was tucked away in his dungeon, he had access to what they called then the parchments. And they were words on paper that would later be turned into something that we call our Bible. And in the midnight hour, when he was asking God for wisdom, he sought wisdom in God's word and he found it in Genesis 15, 15. And it says this, Genesis 15, 15 says this, as for yourself, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried after a ripe old age. Wow, check that out. Isn't that awesome? You may, someone may think, wow, that, that gesture was smart to come up with that idea to die of an old age. Uh, yes, he was, but he was smart in three things. He yielded his will to God. He was smart to ask God for wisdom. And he was super smart to seek God's wisdom and God's word. And he found it. We can do the same thing. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and watch over you for the glory of God and for the advancement of his kingdom. Jews family, keep going at it for Jesus. Peace.